Today we are just outside Albert on the Somme battlefields and we're here to walk in the footsteps of General Henry Rawlinson on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. At zero hour, 7.30 a.m. on the 1st of July, 1916, thousands of men went over the top, here behind us, into the Battle of the Somme. General Henry Rawlinson was in charge that day. He was head of the 4th Army and he was in charge of the Somme offensive here in July, 1916. currently in a place that has become known as the Grandstand. We're just a little bit outside Albert on the hill that kind of comes towards Derningcourt and it's here that General Rawlinson and other senior officers are believed to have stood to observe the opening battle on the Battle of the Somme. The attack here would have happened behind us and they came here to observe the start of the attack before moving to their headquarters a little bit further down the road. Richard Sutton was an officer in Rawlinson's staff for the 4th Army uh, and his diary is available online in digital format and uh, he has a diary entry that references them being stood here on that fateful morning 1st of July 1916 and he describes what they saw here. Owing to the mist I could see very little beyond the bursting of the countless shells the roar of our artillery was intense and the German positions were hidden in clouds of smoke and dirt. Now, of course, when General Rawlinson was stood here, he would have been using um, a pair of fairly strong binoculars to take a look at what was going on. Now, it's not likely he would have been able to see enough detail to actually establish the detail of the attack, but he certainly would have been able to see some of the key sites along the Somme battlefront. So what we're going to do is attach the long lens to my camera. Luckily, I'm a photographer by trade, so I've got the long lens in the car. Um, and we're going to take a look and see some of what General Rawlinson would have seen through his binoculars that morning. Okay so we're going to try and take a look at what we can see here as if we were looking through the binoculars of General Rawlinson. So here in front of us um, is Albert. You can see a couple of the, the spires that go up in Albert. Um, slightly off further to left this goes towards Thiepvale. You can see the memorial up there on the on the hill. So further over to the left goes towards Beaumont Hamill and where like Newfoundland Memorial Park and Sare and if we come back the other way again we've got Albert in front of us and then across in this direction would go towards like um, uh, Mametz and Montauban. So this is the kind of view that General Rawlinson would have had up here at the grandstand overlooking the Somme battlefields. Hope that gives you an idea using the, uh, the long lens here. So there you go, we're starting to get an idea of what uh, General Rawlinson was seeing on that morning, the 1st of July. Some of the things that he could see from being stood right here. From this point, they were going to move back to the 4th Army headquarters. Uh, and Richard Sutton's diary mentions that as well. We returned to the 4th Army headquarters at 8.30. The reports were coming in fast and so far quite satisfactory. So we've now moved down to this place behind me. This is the Chateau de Carrière. Now, yes, I have butchered that name. I sincerely apologize. My French pronunciation is not fantastic. Now, the chateau here has a history that dates back uh, more than a thousand years. But in 1916, this was the fourth army headquarters for General Rawlinson. At about 8.30 a.m. he returned to here after being nearer to the front line. To give you an idea, to get here from where we were has taken me probably about 15 minutes drive, something like that. So I'm um, probably quite sensibly being a senior general, his headquarters were positioned back from the front line. So let's go and explore a little bit more and take a look at more of the story of General Rawlinson as we follow in his footsteps on the 1st of July, the first day of the Battle of the Somme. 
Now, as we walk into the grounds of the chateau here, we just thought we would touch um, on what was mentioned in Richard Sutton's diary there about how the initial reports were positive coming back from the front lines. Now, in hindsight, we know how the first day of the Battle of the Somme was going, and so that might feel surprising. But that's because General Rawlinson was falling victim of one of the biggest problems that anyone had in the Great War, and that was the communication networks. What you have to remember is that this was before proper radio comms existed. They were still using telephones with physical wires trailing behind them that had to be carried forwards and then the wires dug in behind them through the trench lines. Aerial spotters leaning out the sides of aeroplanes, carrier pigeons delivering messages and of course runners either literally on foot running or maybe on horseback or if they were lucky in a motorised vehicle. That meant the messages were very slow to reach the command and sometimes were inaccurate depending on which messages did or did not successfully make it through. In some areas of the Somme, there was some initial success. We've talked in videos before when we were looking at areas near Mametz uh, and down in the southern sector, Montauban, there was some success. So it's quite likely that those were the initial messages that were getting through to Rawlinson. It might just be coincidental that he was receiving the messages of a more successful attack first. The other thing, of course, we have to remember is that in some areas such as Serre, the attack had gone so disastrously wrong that there was absolute chaos. Junior officers who'd moved forwards with the men had been killed and were laying wounded in no man's land. Runners who were with the front waves or the second waves had been killed and so didn't deliver messages backwards. It was quite often the case that communication just was not coming out of the areas where the attack had gone disastrously wrong. Sometimes the aerial spotters couldn't see properly due to the cloud and artillery smoke. They mistook what they were seeing. They thought British troops were in areas where actually it was still German defenders. There was confusion all across the battlefield. And so the fact that Rawlinson was initially receiving positive comms isn't necessarily a huge surprise. <laughs> just walking up to the chateau here and after the rain I've had this morning it is quite a surprise to see a shadow but here is the chateau and I tell you what from the initial look at this it is not surprising that General Rawlinson chose this as his headquarters this building is spectacular now um, I haven't been here before so I'll be honest I don't know what we can or can't see but we're going to go check it out and have a look So we've just come round to the other side of the chateau. There's actually the kind of front entrance. Now, uh, it's actually a public holiday here in France today. And so it seems as though anything that was going on here is closed. There is apparently a little museum here that kind of talks about the history of this place and includes some stuff about the 1st of July. But uh, right now that is, that is closed up. Um, but this is the chateau where Rawlinson's headquarters were. There is actually a photo of him um, stood on the steps outside here, um, just on this step here with this pillar and the window behind him. I'm going to include that into the video here so you can see um, what I mean. But this was the headquarters where Rawlinson was. His staff would have been here, 4th Army headquarters based in this building right here. So within the rooms of the chateau here, uh, Rawlinson would have had his big kind of battle layout board um, set out in front of him. Uh, and he would have had his staff officers in here making key decisions about the battle as the information came through to them. Now, of course, we mentioned about the positive message initially, but unfortunately it wasn't going to stay like that. As the afternoon developed here and more information was getting through to General Rawlinson, it was becoming apparent to him that the attack had failed along vast areas of the front. It was clear to him that the first day of the Somme had not gone as planned. What wasn't clear to him at that stage was the number of casualties that the British were looking at. As the afternoon developed and Rawlingson was putting together the information that he had, he estimated that he had something in the region of 20,000 casualties. The reality was nearly three times that much. 
with more than 57,000 men being left killed, wounded or missing on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. So I hope you found that video interesting, taking a look at some of the places where General Henry Rawlinson was on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, following in his footsteps at the grandstand and here at the 4th Army headquarters. Now whether you look at General Rawlinson as being a man responsible for thousands of deaths or the man who was just simply in charge of a battle that went horribly wrong, either way I think it's really interesting following in the footsteps of someone like that during the course of the first day of the Somme. I certainly hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to see you guys on the next video.